How would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch, go. How would I define our band's musical style? That's my favorite thing. Every time we, uh, every time we, someone asks us uh, what type of genre you are, we're just kind of like, uh, like. This video is brought to you by Gamefly. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's show. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local and not so local music and the people that make it, including my guests. My guests are a band out of Utah that combine a whole bunch of different genres into their own unique spin. I actually reviewed their, uh, their album called Crash Landing, and you can check that out. There's a um, thumbnail on screen. But in the meantime, strap in because we're going to have a very interesting interview with Terrestrial Souls. Hi, guys. Howdy. Hey, hey and uh, by the way, thank you for coming on the channel. And if you're watching this and you don't know who Terrestrial Souls is, thank you very much. Uh, please go ahead and tell people who you are, what you do in the band, and who we're missing. Cool. So I'm Dan. I, uh, I'm the songwriter, um, starter of the band. I play bass on stage, then just as far as recording, guitar, keyboard. Uh, whatever. And I am Kill, and I am the drummer for Trish Russell. Let me redo that. Let me redo that. Um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, it's, it, this, is in, this, is in, this is all in, man. Oh, is it really? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This is Kale. He's the drummer for Terrestrial Souls. Hello. And who are we missing? So we're missing our guitar player, Eric McKenna, and our front man and one of the more important people, Martian Textiles. We uh, got the time zone a little bit wrong, so that was our problem. But yeah, we're glad to be here. No worries, and, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm glad we were able to at least get four-eighths of you. Um, and uh, for, for anybody considering doing this type of thing, being a YouTuber or, or doing an interview or whatever, Make sure you hit record. <laughs> this is not the first time we've had this conversation, I'm sorry to say. All right. Um, and full transparency. What the hell? So um, off camera, we talked a little bit about kind of, you know, the, the process of how ter um, Terrestrial Souls grew from just kind of, you know, funk and, and you know, bass driven to introducing the hip hop and, and the other elements that, that make up the band. Um, I was wondering, at least for the two of you, what's your favorite show memory as Terrestrial Souls? Whether you checked off a bunch of things off your rock star wish list or it went completely off the rails or, or what? You know, even though we've been a band for a year and a half, a little bit less than a year and a half, um, the shows that we have played have been really fun. Um, I mean, they've all just been in our home, uh, well, my home city of Salt Lake. Um, but geez, out of all our show experiences, I mean, our thing is we take shows very, very personally in the sense that we really like to do audience interaction. Um, what we do at the end of all of our shows is we, uh, will do, we'll just put a, like a funky, uh, a funky instrumental out. Then we'll have people from the audience come up on stage and, and do a freestyle session. Um, so, I mean, that's fun. Yeah, we always have people, uh, you know, we're, we're super audience interactive, so we'll always pick someone out of the, out of the audience to go grab us a drink and bring it up on stage. Um, so, I mean, we, I mean, we just, you know, we like to have fun. Was there, I don't think there's anything, like, super out of the ordinary as far as, like, the, yeah. the shows we played. I mean, like I said, I think we've only played, like, seven or eight shows. We need to start counting. Yeah, well, I think... Most memorable, memorable. Um, honestly, so far, I would just say our first show because that really is what you know kind of kickstarted everything. It kind of really introduced our our sound to the people, and um, we had never been really heard before that. Like yeah. we'd only been out for a few months, and the people that we played with, uh, they were they're pretty big in the scene, so they had us play first just because no one knew who we were so it was actually pretty funny like 
opening up for this show that people had no idea who this band was. And this is all rappers, by the way. We we play with uh we play with drums, guitar, and we uh, sometimes our friend Aisha, who plays cello, she'll come up. Maybe she uh will come up and play on stage with us. So that first day, that first show, uh, we had a cello player, and it man, it was so it was so cool, and all these people that were uh, pretty prominent in the scene played after us. And I hate to be cocky, but we just, you know, we kind of blew them out of the water. And it was just, I, I think we kind of, that that shocked the scene, because there was a lot of people at that concert that had been familiar with the scene before. So just kind of coming out of nowhere, that was just a really great debut. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we've had fun at all our shows, but that one was definitely one of the more memorable ones, for sure. Yeah, you never forget your first. I still remember my first time performing uh, my own original music in front of, people where it wasn't just like you know an open mic but it was actually we're doing a set kind of thing yeah. um and and that was that was pretty cool uh i still remember hearing first I, for whatever somehow we had a, re, a tape recorder or something going and you can hear somebody say in the middle of it these guys rock and you know, talking about you, you're just adrenaline pumped into your veins i was i could have just biked up the eiffel tower it was awesome um one of the best, best feelings in the world, man. Well, I think yep. that's kind of what we were saying earlier in our part one of our interview about uh about starting out is getting that getting that uh th those type of compliments is just kind of what keeps you going, what makes you be like, okay, you know, like this this is good, you know, if I get genuine compliments and let's keep on doing this, yeah, we're doing something right, doing something right. Definitely. And by the way, if you're watching this and you're at a live music thing. Don't be shy. They, we want to know. They, they want to know that you're having a good time. Even something as simple as "woo" or you know, any of that stuff. It, it really, it, 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 even if they don't react on stage, it, it feeds us because every musician is insecure. We're all riddled with you know, imposter syndrome and just all the things. Uh, the more, and especially, um, I'm 50 years old. So, like your generation and the younger, even younger than you guys, have be, are so much more self aware of things like imposter syndrome or you know depression or anxiety than when I was growing up. You know, you just figured it out. You just dealt sure. with it. And hearing that, you know, positive reinforcement, um, it, it, I have a theory. I have a theory that. The reason why so many um, musicians, especially like famous rock and rollers and famous musicians, uh, start get messing with like drugs and alcohol and having real problems with it, is because they're trying to chase that high that they get from coming off stage. Sure, from yeah, the crowd sure. Loving them, and the bigger the crowd, the bigger the hit. And then you crash suddenly, and you're like, "I know, I want to keep feeling like that." So, all right, so. Um, what is that noise? We're downtown. It might. What What are you hearing? It might be the street or. It, it, which, I by the way. Yeah. By the way, real quick, uh, we're just. I kind of want to yeah, show everyone yeah, yeah. we're at my home city of Salt Lake. We're on top of the rooftop, just in case everyone uh, wants to see the gorgeous city. Nice. Yeah. All right, on. Sorry, we're just back on the rooftop, and we're just kind of want to see. If anyone's never been to Salt Lake. Ugh. So was, anyway, that might have been worth it. No worries. Um, can I can I go ahead and suggest maybe we roll the windows up? Oh, is that what it's there? Yes, yeah, let's definitely do that. There we go. All right. That's definitely a little dark too. Yeah, a little dark, but, all right. <laughs> all right so. There you go. Perfect. We'll get this figured out. So yeah, okay. There's like a weird, um, almost alien, uh, uh, reverb voice thing going on because I'm going through your speakers, I think. So, no, that it's not a, big deal. not a big deal. Like I said, um, I'll, I'll get the audio directly from your device when we're doing this. So, moving on. Perfect. If you want to be on the channel, wait, did I already, talk? I already said that, right? Yeah, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up and uh, we'll have a good time. But, I think before anything else, we're going to take a quick break here because uh, it's been a weird little thing for, for, for all of us with, between me not hitting record and just everything. So um, we're going to take a quick little break here. I, uh, I think I 
in a booze break, and we're going to hear from future Josh. So see you in a minute. And now a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. If you're like me, your free time comes at a high price. Once you factor in work, family, friends, and unexpected plans, it can be hard to find some me time for yourself. That's where video games come in. But what to play? Well, just like me, you might have commitment issues when it comes to buying video games. Good news. Gamefly is here to beat your personal time boss levels. Gamefly is the leading online video game rental service in the United States. They deliver the widest selection and availability of games for all the major consoles. Some of the benefits of membership include value. Memberships start for as low as $9.50. Selection. Gamefly has the largest selection of video games anywhere with thousands of titles, including all the new releases and classics. Convenience. Gamefly delivers games to your door. Shipping is free both ways, and there are no late fees. Savings. Gamefly members get free shipping on products such as controllers, accessories, and collectibles. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to save even more money by checking out their pre-played game sale. You'll get the convenience of services like Netflix designed for busy gamers like you and me. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Gamefly for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's video. We're back, and if you want to help the channel grow, if you want to help me do what I'm doing, the best way, if that sponsor spot interested you at all, I'm not sure what it is at the time of recording, if that interested you at all, please use the link down in the description. It'll help me grow the channel. It'll help you out. Everybody wins. So, moving on. Let's talk... Um, I want to talk motivation, okay? Off camera, we talked earlier, you know, kind of musical influences, but what is, what do you listen to now that gets you like hyped and, and wanting to write me new music or, or make new music? Oof. I mean, yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, just kind of, you know, what you were saying earlier about kind of chasing that high, chasing that high of, uh, of, you know, actually having fans actually like going and playing a show and having people that you've never met before sing lyrics to your songs, especially like after such a short time being around. That's, that's the stuff of, that's the type of stuff that really like makes you want to continue doing what you do. And as far as like bands, uh, you know, there's so many bands that we love and, and that influence us, but I wouldn't say any one specific band that uh, kind of continuously motivates us. Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's just kind of the, uh, the rush, the thrill of writing a song of, of, uh, playing a show of having fans that really just motivates us. Yeah. I think, I um, for me, especially, um, I think just trying to find a unique sound that no one's ever heard before. You know, I think that's what the real motive. I mean, we all have, you know, these different influences and some are the same, some are different. Um, but yeah, I mean, just trying to find, make music that no one's heard before, I think is what inspires me, you know? Awesome. I wanted to ask, um, kind of a weird question. Actually, no, I want to ask a usual interview question. I'm going to apologize in advance. Now, in the intro, I, I kind of described how you guys, you know, in your bio, what it says uh, with the whole funk and the rock and the hip hop. But how would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch, go. How would I define our band's musical style? That's my favorite thing. Every time we, uh, every time we, someone asks us uh, what type of genre you are, we're just kind of like, uh, like. We're at least in, fun, in deep of different rock, genre. hip hop. Yeah. Uh, um, geez, that's a hard one, man. Like I, I don't asking. even really know yeah. what to say. Like, uh, I mean, it's it's there's definitely like the obvious ones, you know, hip hop. Yeah, um, we are kind of yeah. funk heavy, but we kind of here's here's kind of our thing kind of is of we're we're coming up with a lot more heavy stuff, a lot more hard rock stuff. Yeah. Um, we do Rage Against Machine covers, uh, at our shows. Um, I'm not really sure if that answered the question. Like I said, that was, that's a tough one. That's one of those ones that you actually need to 
to think of before. Exactly. That's for you new musicians out there. This is a thing you really need to think about because you were going to get asked that question so much. And being able to, to have an answer for that, even if, if it's kind of this general thing that you guys, like you guys just said, will get people interested a lot more than just saying, oh, you'll have to just check. You'll have to just, you know, come to the show or, you know, I sound like me, something like that. Um, ha try this one on for size. How about a cosmic fusion of everything that moves you? Uh, I like that. A cosmic, that one, fusion. a cosmic fusion of everything, that, like musically or just kind of uh, in general. Everything that moves you. Everything that moves me. You can use um, that. That's free. There's something about music, man, that just like, you know, when when I write something that that will go in the studio, record with drums and guitar, and, and puts, uh, makes the hair on my arm stand up, that's, you know, that's really what, what cosmically moves me, is being able to just, like, hear what I created. Like, I'll write a bass line, then I'll have Kale put drums on it, I'll have our guitar player put guitar on it. Then I'll obviously have our singer do lyrics on it. And the first time I hear it, man, like with, with these guys on it, it's just like, and brings my music to life. It's, it moves me more cosmically than, than anything can possibly think of. I agree. Yes, it, you actually, and you actually jumped the gun on, I was going to ask about the songwriting process for the band. And it starts with you apparently most times. So it, all the times. All the times, slackers. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I mean, you know, in this, like I was saying earlier, when I uh, started this idea, when I was like 18, 19 years old, and then in the meantime, while looking for a singer, I, uh, you know, wrote wrote all these songs. So now we're just like backed up. Now we're just oh, yeah. backed up with instruments. We this, this guy has a notebook full. Yeah. Of Song. We have song ideas. we have waiting to be five made. songs out right now, but like we must have twenty songs written and ten songs just like over at our audio engineers' files. So, yeah. so I think you know it's we're just at first I thought it was kind of a uh, a bad thing how long it took me to find rappers to find a front man, but at the end of the day it ended up being a good thing because when I finally did find him. I had, you know, all these songs written, so we were just able to pump one song out the other. And I think even though we've been around for a year and a half, I think that's kind of what moved us so forward is we can just stay consistently with everything that's already written. Awesome. So uh, any plans to come to Vegas and perform anytime soon? I love I, Vegas. I would yeah, that would be so much fun. Yeah. We, uh, we're actually, I'm not sure how familiar with, uh, with Wendover. Wendover up up north from you, Nevada, oh, little town. Uh, I, I mean, I've 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 heard of it. I don't, I've never been. Yeah. there. it's it's in Nevada. It's about it's about ninety minutes away from us. So we're always in Nevada. Uh, Vegas, not so much. But what was it about six hours? Vegas. Yeah, it's about six hours. Of Vegas, five and a half depends on how fast you drive. Yeah, about that. Yeah. But uh, I mean, we'd love to. Out of all the places in Nevada, I'm not going to lie, Las Vegas is arguably one of my least favorite cities. <laughs> Just because I, I, I'm an outdoorsman, I'm a camper, and what Nevada has to offer when it comes to camping is unlimited. It's unbelievable. But, you know, I'm not much of a gambler, so it's like whatever, as far as Vegas goes. But Well, you definitely... I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Henderson is fantastic. Uh, Henderson actually has the most uh, parks per capita uh, in the in the uh, country. Oh, what's up? Nice. Yeah, a lot of lot of parks. Uh, a lot of them have like water, you know, coming out of the ground to get people wet because you know Nevada. It's hot as hell. Oh, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's hot as balls. Yeah. Um, now I've I've actually had a couple uh, bands from Salt Lake City on the channel, either virtually or they, they made the trip, and. When I, I lived in Salt Lake City for winter, and it was about oh over twenty years ago, and I was wondering there wasn't really much of a live music scene in Salt Lake City at the time that I that I heard of, um, and it seems to have really taken off in in multiple genres like metal or what you guys do, 
Um, and I was wondering if you've noticed that as well. Has the scene kind of been blooming, or was it always there since you know you you came up into it? Well, this guy's from from California, yeah. so this is my. <laughs> I've been here for about two and a half years so far, so I don't really have much experience for that question. But um, from my perspective, I mean, being 28 years old, you know, I can't, I can't speak for the Salt Lake scene 20 years ago, of course. But uh, you know, it's it, it does seem to be growing. It really does. Um, there's some great artist lounge that have just uh, been barely popping up. Um, there's one band from utah that was on jimmy kimmel like a few weeks ago it's kind of unrelated but i mean from what it seems like it seems like uh uh the scene's getting a little bit bigger and bigger and that definitely makes me happy as hell um like i said i, I really don't have much to compare it to um there's only like a small handful of of bands that came from salt lake that really got big the first one that comes to mind is the pop punk band the used they were Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green, the used. So yeah, there's a few ones. But as far as the scene, man, I, I you know, I can't really I don't really have it much to compare to. I mean I've been to, you know, Seattle, LA. So, you know, it's 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 growing and we're so stoked that we're part of a growing scene instead of a scene that's already so established. It's I'm sure it's kinda hard to move. I can't speak for, you know, musicians out in LA. But I feel like being in Salt Lake, where the population's a lot less dense, and there's a scene that's growing, I feel like it's there's a lot of opportunities over here. Awesome, awesome. I'm hoping to uh, come out there sometime this year and like hit a bunch of spots that just weren't there when last time I was there. So, sure. Yeah, downtown Salt Lake the, is the place to go out of all places in the state. Well, here's hoping. So. Um, Last question. You made it. Yay. Here we are. Yes. Um, off camera, we talked about the earliest musical influence where you remember, you know, you said, I want to do that. And, that, and you know, that was a bit of a hard question to answer. But now I want to say, I want to ask you, let's talk to little you or new musicians. What is one thing you wish someone had told you, hey, this is something you need to know before you go down this twisted road that is, you know, performing music and writing music. And, and don't say change your strings. Um, why don't you take that one? Um, Let's see. Uh, I guess you go for, first. Yeah. So <laughs> teach the children. One, one that kind of just pops off right off the bat is um, it's kind of drummer specific, um, but it can translate, I guess, to other musicians. Um, you don't when I was younger I, I used to play you know I, I would try and play as many notes as I can and kind of when you're I guess when you're in a band you want to play with the band if that makes sense you know you don't want to overplay and stand out I guess from the band totally um, you know it's finding that right balance uh, between all all different all the musicians in the band, I guess I didn't find that out until actually you know recently you know about five years ago. Which if I would have known that a lot sooner, it would have helped out definitely. As far yeah. as oh sorry, go, no go ahead. Well, I was gonna say that's great advice, uh, not just for drummers but you know for musicians. The hardest thing you can do sometimes is to just listen to what does the song actually need, not yeah. how can I make myself, you know, the star of the song. Um, I, I I took some drum lessons uh, for a while, and, and I got to the point where, okay, I can, I can drum to a song, but I kept wanting to put in my own things. And my drum teacher, uh, who actually was my first ever interview on the channel, Sean Flume, uh, he's in Kansas City now. He had me play along to um, Bigger Than My Body by John Mayer. And John Mayer, John Mayer told his drummer, I need you to play less. I need you to, you know, just, yep. just play what the song is. And when you listen to what the drummer is doing on John's songs, it's, it's like beginning drummer 101, but at the same time, it fits perfectly. Yeah. And less like, is more. Yeah, uh, on that song in particular. 
it isn't so like the the song is fading out when you hear all of a sudden a fill <laughs> where he's just like, here's my chance. But that was a, a real hard lesson for me because, you know, you can practice rudiments and you can, you know, rock out to, I don't know, Foo Fighters or whatever and, and yeah. go for it and end up all sweaty. But the hardest thing to do is just sit in the pocket and just play and, yep. and, and not be Dave Grohl or not be, you know, the, the, the star necessarily. Uh, you know, but, yeah, I, I agree. Sorry. No, it's, it's, it's the same thing with bass and with, you know, guitar and, and, and even singers. You got it. There are moments. It's like, okay, now it's my turn. Now, now I step back. So as far as my uh, advice uh, to tell myself if I was younger or younger generations, I would say just be patient. That's one of the hardest things for me is, uh, man, like before I found Martian, our front man, I was, I was like considering like moving out of state to just, just to find a, uh, to find a front man. Cause I had such hard time here and I just like, man, I just got so impatient. And at one point, like, after getting so discouraged for trying to find people and just, like, nothing working, at one point, like, the discouragement got so intense that I was even thinking to myself, like, like, is this even meant for me? Like, was, should this, should I continue on or is this just going to be one disappointment after the other? But I continued on. I found Martian. And a year and a half later, here we are doing interviews, playing shows. We have merch out. We just got some merch. So, man, if I if I did make that decision to say, you know, to fuck it, I'm just like not gonna continue. Then, you know, I wouldn't be having this this radio interview right now. This this interview right now. That's a good one, man. So, I mean, it's it's obvious. It's obvious information. You know, everyone's heard this before to like not give up. But like, I'm here to remind everyone, like, dude, like, don't give up. It's, it's, you know, even if it doesn't work out, like, you're going to die just, like, always having to question what could be, what could have been. Yep. And I'm so glad I didn't quit because now I don't get to guess what could have been. I know what could have been because, hell, here we are. And honestly, truer words have never been spoken. Like, stay the course. You're doing it for a reason, whatever that reason is. Keep doing it. And if you're doing it, you're a musician. Plain and simple. Um, and that's something that I have a, a part. I have a line of merch called Make Music Not Excuses because of all that stuff back there. I have to remind myself, stop editing, turn around, go touch an instrument, make some noise, and then come back. And, and I always feel better. But also I always remember reminded like, that's right. <laughs> I used to do this a lot before I got into the YouTube thing and it made me happy and I need to try and do this more and, and yeah so thank you very much for being on the channel and thank you for watching um, if you want to you know find out what they're doing I've got their social media links down in the description um, I also have a, a link down there for the review of Crash Landed their album that's out now and I like it it's, it's just unique enough without being totally off the rails <laughs> so oh, yeah in the meantime, we're going to, uh, I think we have a music video from you guys, right? We do. Yep. So stick around. We're going to see a music video from Terrestrial Souls, and then uh, I'll see you in the outro. Other than that, guys, temporarily say goodbye. Hey, thank see you. you. Thank you, everyone. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Wake up, next to a guy made of porcelain, drink slut in my hand, yeah I did this shit again, <laughs> I'm ready for it, yeah I'm ready for it, lighter please. The party at a 10, can't remember where I am Trying to think harder to remember what we did My eyes, I roll them open, my phone is broken Plug it in, take a piss, hit a clean mouth switch Don't know whose house we in, but I'm about to raid the fridge Creative some bitch, even more when I'm fed Smile on my face, waking up with my folks Ladies love those terrestrial souls Remove the negative, let the protons glow We some happy motherfuckers 
not even trying to glow. Probably chilling with the birds, writing lyrics, blowing oh so high that we stuck up in vertigo. A drunk gentleman, I'll be on liquor and be this smile I will keep. Another day full of love for you and me. You and I see why not be happy. A drunk gentleman, yes, I'll be on liquor and be this smile I will keep. Another day full of love for you and me. Everybody runs from a cop when you're drunk Name is not Judy, so there is no judge A happy mistake, also on purpose Got a friend in me and good vibes, we trust If you can hold your liquor when you don't act like a bitch Expert opinion, pass out with your shoes off Got a noise complaint, make sure the door's locked Who's next to beer pong, roll till the week On the crazy shit tonight, it's happiness we feed on Broke up the drunk brawl, to the window, to the wall Turning up to little John, girl, is that camera on? On until the morning dawns, on until the morning dawns Drunk gentlemen, I'll be on liquor and be This smile I will keep, another day full of love for you and me why not be happy? A drunk gentleman, yes, I'll be on liquor and weed. This smile I will keep. Another day full of love for you and me. You and I see. Why not be happy? Fashionably fucking late. Big smile on my face. Shots in everybody's hands. What the fuck? I lost. The night was going great. Before the wild goose chase. No idea where I am. And I'm always fucking dead. Someone asked for a plate, for a bumper, car chase. Honey's off a ring and dance. Damn, she got some tight pants. With a tight waist, please don't have a bad face. When we having fun, man, we don't ever have plans. I will never stop laughing. That's not in the damn plan. Supposedly, you live once. We don't know what's happening. Keep it clean, no scam. Don't worry how I am. I came to party, choking dance like a drunk gentleman. I want to thank Trust Real Souls for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. If you want to know more about them, check out the links down in the description. So catch them live if you can. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe, click up there. Don't forget to ring the bell. And, uh, oh yeah, if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing. I love you all. And in the meantime, yeah, have a great day. We'll see you next time on Room 6.